Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Before I bring on our terrific friend of ATP and our esteemed scholarly guest, uh, I want to remind all of you out there in ATP land, if you haven't yet subscribed to our text message alert system, please take out your cell phone now, text the message truth in the message line and address it to the number 88202 push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to our free text message alert system and you'll get all of the content that we produce in the palm of your hand absolutely free. Okay, did you do it? Let's meet our guest. Claire Lopez, the founder of Lopez Liberty LLC, is an esteemed scholar in Middle East terrorism. She comments on domestic and foreign relations of the United States all around the world, formerly with the CIA and a good friend of ours. Welcome back, Claire. Thank you, Barry. Very glad to be back with you. Let's talk about Iran today. It's all over the news. The Iran nuclear deal appears to no longer be the top priority it was uh, just a few weeks ago in the Biden administration's State Department foreign policy. In fact, there is skepticism now leaking out of Washington that perhaps a new amended JCPOA will not include the United States. What happened to change at least the tone of the administration in regards to the JCPOA? Well, it's not just the Biden administration, but it is also uh, a result of what's going on on the Iranian side. People might know uh, that Iran uh, held sham elections once again in June, month and a half ago or so. Um, and uh, the former chief uh, uh, of the judiciary in Iran named Ibrahim Raisi was selected, not elected, the Iranian people boycotted the election selected by the Supreme Leader to be the next president. Well, uh, he will be sworn in formally on Thursday, uh, the uh, 5th of uh, this month, August, 2021. And um, he is a known hard hardliner. Uh, his most notorious claim to fame, if I can put it that way, I guess, is that he was part of the death commission back in 1988 when the Iranian regime executed tens of thousands of prisoners uh, in the jails um, who were mainly members of the primary Iranian uh, opposition group, the Mujahideen Nikolk. So this hardliner coming into office, uh, first of all, caused a delay, kind of a hiatus in the talks that have been going on over in Vienna on the nuclear deal. And that hiatus has been for quite a few weeks in the middle of the summer, so you might expect a break, but um, the Iranian regime itself has been giving signals now that they're not all that eager to come back after the break either. And with this hardliner Raisi coming into office, not at all inclined to compromise in any way but only to make demands that every single one of all sanctions ever instituted against the regime be dropped before they would even talk. So it's really something on both sides. And I think the Biden administration is rather reflecting um, the signals coming out of Tehran right now. Well, let's talk about the biggest signal, if we can call it that, coming out of Tehran. Um, an Israeli-owned tanker was attacked uh, on the high seas a week ago with missiles that the Iranian press says were Iranian missiles. So there's no secret that the press in Iran is 100% controlled uh, by the mullahs. They don't have an independent press. The press is like Pravda in the old Soviet Union. If you put the wrong story out, you're gone. So everybody knows you better toe the party line. and. They literally killed a couple crew members on this ship. And the world is in outraged uh, response to that because this is, that, the, in the old days, that was a declaration of war. And then this morning, the news is out that there may be a number of large cargo ships near Iran that are being hijacked as you and I are on the air. Iran is accused of hijacking those ships, or at least their proxies are. One of the ships, from what the news first news reports say, is being directed 
under foreign control towards Iran. So the question is, if you're trying to be conciliatory, do you act like you're declaring war on the rest of the free world's trade? What are they thinking, Claire? Well, I, they're not trying to be conciliatory uh, first. And um, I think what they're thinking is they have the Biden regime, uh, the Biden administration, um, at their beck and call, desperate to rejoin this uh, nuclear deal, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action from back in July 2015, which President Donald Trump withdrew the US from in May of 2018. Um, but they think they have the upper hand. They think they've got the strong hand. Uh, and with Raisi coming into office this very week, um, they are uh, showing more and more aggression and belligerence. And I'll, I'll, I'll mention that uh, the attack on that cargo ship uh, near uh, the Gulf of Oman, that is also quite near to the uh, Strait of Hormuz, um, about a week ago, uh, yes, killed two crew members, but it was conducted with drones, not missiles, but drones. And this is a really worrisome development, I guess, uh, because it seems to be the direction of Iranian aggression um, that, is, that is taking the place even of either manned strikes of some kind or missile strikes. Um, we'll recall, of course, that drones have been used before against the Saudi Arabian oil facilities, for example, um, as well as shipping in, in these waters before. Um, what happened uh, on Tuesday, the, um, let's see, that would be the 3rd of, uh, of August, as we're talking here now, um, the attacks actually involved armed gunmen forcibly boarding. Uh, at least one, maybe more, of these cargo ships. They're oil tanker cargo ships in, 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 in the, uh, the area off Oman. Um, it was resolved. Um, the gunmen left the ship or were forced off, not quite sure which, uh, and the ships uh, returned uh, to, their, to their course. Um, but what it does seem to show is that, uh, once again, it's open season on international shipping uh, in these waters near Iran. Uh, and the last thing that, that I'll say about that is that I read in one of the outlets, I think it might have been uh, the uh, Jerusalem Times, but not positive of that, um, that the powers, uh, United Kingdom, United States, and Russia, the headline of the article was that they had given a green light to Israel to retaliate against Iran, everyone agrees that this is that Iranian instigation, green light to Iran to respond as the, the, uh, the Israelis find appropriate. Yeah, and I think it's gonna happen, Claire. And what you may not know is supposedly as we're speaking, there's another hijacking that has just taken place. So it's, it's really, really gotten brazen. This is like the piracy in the 17 and 1800s. And those were considered to be acts of war as these are piracy on the high seas and there will be a military response. So let's jump back to Ibrahim Raisi. I call him the terror of Tehran. He's the new Iranian president, as you said, who was elected Iranian style, which is this is the guy that's gonna win and anyone who runs against him will either be killed or removed from the ballot. So it's sort of like, an election in Russia or South America or any of the places like maybe the Palestinian Authority, where if you run against the incumbent, it's not good for your health. So has Raisi signaled or any of the people around him what his stance will be on the JCPOA? Because the talks are supposed to resume shortly in Vienna. Right. Well, um, the first thing to realize is that Raisi, as the new Iranian president, uh, is really um, the mouthpiece for the Supreme Leader. Supreme Leader, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, has that title for a reason. And he himself, Khamenei, has signaled that he's not all that keen to get Iran back into the talks. I think they have uh, seen that even the Biden administration and Secretary of State Blinken um, are holding fast to 
not taking off all sanctions uh, before talks resume or as a precondition for talks. And seeing that they're not all that interested, they, the Iranians, in, 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 in getting the talks you know, back on track again. And, and in particular, because in the interim of all of this hiatus in the talks, uh, the Iranians have been moving full steam ahead with their, their nuclear weapons program. Well, um, let me, in term, let, let huh? me stop you on that point, because that okay. actually leads into my next question. Mm -hmm. So Iran's nuclear program has been going full speed ahead like a freight train. They are so far out of compliance with the JCPOA, it doesn't even exist for them anymore. They're enhancing uranium at such a uh, level that they are literally on the brink of nuclear weaponizing their uh, missiles, or they're already there, we really don't know, since nobody is seeing most of the sites where this work is taking place. I, exactly. From my perspective, it seems impossible they're going to back down from it. What do you think Raisi's position, because like you said, he's the microphone for the Supreme Leader. Do you think there really is any chance at all, Claire, that they will give up their nuclear weapons program? No, no, absolutely not. Um, that program began under the first Ayatollah, first Supreme Leader, the Ayatollah Khomeini back in the late 1980s before he died. It has never skipped a beat ever since 1988. The world only found out about the program clandestine for 14 years in mid 2002, when again, the Iranian opposition group, the Mujahideen Kalk National Council of Resistance of Iran political umbrella group blew the lid off of it. Um, revealing satellite imagery of places like Natanz and Isfahan and so forth. That program has not, as I said, skipped a beat since then. Um, after the Israeli Mossad heist of those um, documents uh, pertaining to what's called the Ahmad program, uh, the secret Iranian nuclear weapons program out of a Tehran warehouse, uh, that heist took place in 2016. Uh, announced a year or more later, um, those documents show that, that the program to develop nuclear weapons, the nuclear bomb, uh, has always been ongoing and remains you know, in, in force to this day. Um, and then if you look, uh, one of the sources I like to, to consult is David Albright's group called ISIS, that's the good ISIS, by the way, the Institute for Science and International Security. That group does very good reporting uh, on, the, on the progress in Iran's nuclear weapons program. And I recommend that website uh, if you want to see updates on where they're at. Um, but they're, uh, as you say, Barry, they're enriching up to 60%, which actually is enough to make a nuclear device, although above 90 is optimum. Yeah, I've read um, it's actually 80% in some locations, but nobody it, really knows. It, nobody really knows because the main part of the Iranian nuclear program has remained clandestine. Off-limits sites for the IAEA, International Atomic Energy uh, Agency, to investigate. Um, they're not allowed to go see places they would like to inspect. Um, they're uh, openly um, amassing more stockpiles of enriched uranium than, than the JCPOA ever permitted. Uh, they're milling uranium metal, which would make uh, the hemispheres uh, for a nuclear bomb, a pit of a nuclear bomb, um, installing advanced centrifuges. Um, uh, they are installing and, and setting up a new centrifuge hall uh, underground at the Natanz enrichment site um, that no one has been allowed to go in and inspect, but we know that it's underway. So all of these things indicate that under Raisi, the new president, it'll be the same as under the old president, Hassan Rouhani and everyone that preceded him. And that is full steam ahead uh, to uh, a breakout capacity um, at, at, at the ISIS uh, good site. The most recent report there that I've just read is the estimate is even if you take only what's known openly, never mind clandestinely, the Iranians could be a little more than two months away from a breakout capability of building bombs. And that's plural. 
I myself and others have thought for a long time that they've already been building warheads in the clandestine sites, but again, clandestine program. Claire, tell people where they can find out about you and see your work. Well, um, certainly right here at the American Truth Project, um, where these videos are always posted. Um, and please also, if you would like, text, join the text messaging uh, system for ATP, uh, where if you text my name, L-O-P-E-Z, Lopez, to the number 88202, you will get all of the updates, text message uh, updates of, of my, uh, my videos and other work here. In addition, um, you can go to the Citizens Commission on National Security, the United West, also the Glazov Gang, uh, a project of the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Uh, and online, uh, I am at Claire M. Lopez on Twitter and on Facebook and at Lopez Liberty uh, LLC on Telegram. The ubiquitous Claire Lopez, she's everywhere. <laughs> Thanks for coming on today. And as a reminder, as Claire said, sign up for our text message alert system. It's free, it's simple, it takes about three seconds and you'll see all of Claire Lopez and all of our stuff uh, absolutely for free in the palm of your hand on your cell phone. For ATP Report, thanks for joining us today. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Thank <laughs> you.